Leon Trotsky in February of 1920 was to be one of the first to propose NEP-like changes. This was rejected by Lenin, however, at the time. Following the passage of the NEP, Trotsky wrote NEP and Soviet Power, which he published in 1922, and this was endorsed by Lenin. As well, Trotsky would defend the NEP at the 4th Congress of the Comintern, and Lenin referred people to read this if they were not convinced of the NEP's importance. An example of this can be seen in Lenin's article to the Russian colony in North America. As well, in 1925, Trotsky continued to talk about the long-term prospects of the NEP, as well as the socialist industry continuing to grow within it. And now, you might also be wondering, hey Toucan, didn't you talk about this before? And you're right, in Tr did Stalin steal Trotsky's economic program? Did Lenin think the Soviet Union was state capitalist? And let us take a look at all the history hubs. What if Trotsky came to power instead of Stalin? So you're right, but... I really want to beat this question to death, and there's more I can talk about in regards to it. And you may also be wondering, so if all that's true, why do people continue to repeat the idea that Trotsky was against the NEP? And well, there's a lot of people of certain political persuasions that often mislead people and do things like conflating the trade union debate with the debate on the new economic policy, which pretty much happened right up until the NEP. And so the dates are very close together, so it makes it very easy to conflate them. And for that reason is why I'm going to be spending some time talking about the trade union debate. Because during it, Trotsky proposed things like labor armies, and people often try to act like this was Trotsky's alternative to the NEP, but he was proposing these things prior to the NEP. So let's talk about that. First, let's establish what a labor army is and what Trotsky was advocating for, which at least at first, was using military units to do labor. Military units no longer needed for fighting during the Civil War could then be used for labor. Of course, this was proposed to expand, and you'd have basically permanent military units with people rotating in and out, carrying out labor and reconstructing from the Civil War. Now, for some context, uh, to some extent, this is still normal in Russia, though rather than it being a full form of service, it's kind of an alternative service for people not fit for military service. France also maintains a civil conscription service. Germany does in their constitution, though it's not an act of use. And in the U.S., this election and in past, Democrats have endorsed some level of civil conscription. Granted, you know, these are capitalist powers, but it shows that this policy is kind of normal. But even within socialist uh, parties... For example, the Russian provisional government had been attempting to set up a similar service, and the Soviets in June of 1917 also endorsed the idea of compulsory civil labor. So this position was not exclusive to Trotsky, and the Mensheviks and SRs also endorsed it in 1917. And in February 5th of 1920, an article in Pravda endorsed these reforms, and it carried Lenin's signature. As well, one of the original labor armies was created by Stalin in the Ukraine. And really, that's the thing. Prior to the late 1920s, Soviet leadership was in agreement with this plan. Both Bukharin and Lenin agreed with Trotsky, at least up until Trotsky triggered a split, in part due to him attacking trade union leadership, which caused them to get angry. As well, the international situation really began to change. Uh, the blockade had been lifted, and despite this, Trotsky maintained a rather pessimistic position, where Lenin was more hopeful, and this motivated him moving further away from Bukharin and Trotsky on this question. And this would continue to form debates well into the era of the NEP, which is too much for me to cover in this video, but these dealt with issues of foreign trade and isolationism, and this is why Sokolnikov, uh, with Lenin's full support, thought that capitalism could be brought to the bargaining table uh, to engage in trade. So as far as Trotsky's motivation, in general, Trotsky felt most of the rest of the country was dysfunctional and that they were at risk from another intervention from the West. The economy was in collapse. The cities were depopulated as people fled in search of food. This combined with the foreign intervention fears as well as the failure of the German Revolution. And Trotsky was not alone, but it's clear he was kind of hopeless in this era and eventually become more hopeful and start to flip on issues of foreign trades towards the mid-1920s. But... Back to 1920, the trade union debate. So both the changing international situation and Trotsky's attack on the trade union leaders is why the leadership began to split on this issue. With Lenin versus Trotsky and with Bukharin taking a sort of compromise position. So Bukharin did endorse uh, labor armies as well. The trade union organs would be part of the state and engage in economic planning. And this sort of ties into certain questions of workers' control and who does economic planning, which I'll explain a little bit more in a bit. But... Bukharin argued Lenin and Trotsky's positions were compatible, and he'd tried to avoid a split because of this. However, Lenin would not agree that they were compatible, and at the 10th Congress of the trade union question, Bukharin formed a joint platform with Trotsky, with Bukharin saying, 
We did not join Trotsky. Trotsky joined us. And the thing is, with the passage of the NEP at the 10th Congress, the debate on the trade unions basically disappeared. So the Bolsheviks walked into October with no real economic plan, and figures involved in various movements wanted their areas to generally be in charge of the economy. Trade union Bolsheviks wanted the trade unions to be in control of economic matters, where some of the Bolsheviks involved in the factory committees wanted them to stay more independent of the trade unions. It was also apparent from the get-go that every factory being fully in control of the workers at that given factory with no overseeing body was unsustainable. The factory committee movement moved to centralize, not from the top, but from the below, from within the movement. Much like how Trotsky was calling the trade unions to instill discipline, in 1917 through 1918, the factory committees also attempted to instill discipline in the workers. As well, the Mensheviks and the SRs rejected the idea of workers' control and believed it must be done through the state, where at the time Lenin was promoting resolutions that factory committees should be given more control over some of the levels of planning. Figures involved in the trade union movement were more focused on state control. For example, the Petrograd Metal Workers Union, for example, said that the factory committee should exist, but they were to be subservient to the trade union movement, and that the trade unions should engage in controlling production. So without spending too much time on this, they already kind of have. The trade union debate contained a certain level of continuation of this debate, which took place mostly in 1918. And the trade union debate also meant that Trotsky was more marginalized after losing this fight going into the 1920s power struggles. So another reason why people think Trotsky hated the NEP is because in the 1920s, the various anti-Trotsky factions often claimed he hated or underestimated the peasantry. And in the interest of time, I won't be going into this. If you'd like me to dedicate a video to the idea of Trotsky underestimating the peasantry, let me know in the comments. So in conclusion, Leon Trotsky proposed NEP-like changes first. This was rejected by Lenin. During this time, due to the economic chaos and Trotsky seeing the military as the most well-functioning part of the state, he wanted to take full and total control of rebuilding from the Civil War using military methods. And to an extent, it was clear from his time in charge of the Red Army, he had a hammer and he clearly started to see everything as a nail. Though it is clear he did also entertain certain other ideas. And once war communism was abandoned, he was willing to be flexible and became a proponent of the NEP. Though not without his criticisms, he wanted more focus on industry, and while he initially was opposed to anything beyond purchasing some machinery, towards the 20s, with his views on commodity intervention, he became much more pro-trade. So, to summarize with a quote from Robert C. Tucker, Stalinism, Essays, and Historical Interpretation, this article within it is written by Stephen Cohen. Trotsky's actual economic proposals in the 1920s were based on the NEP and its continuation. He urged greater attention to heavy industry and planning earlier than Bukharin, and he worried more about the village Kulak, but his remedies were moderate, market-orientated, or as the expression went, nepist. Like Bukharin, he was a reformist in economic policy, looking forward towards the evolution of NEP Russia towards industrialism and socialism. So, if you like this video, please subscribe and please share this video around on Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter. The sharing really helps with the views. <laughs>